Hey everybody, it's Aluna Michaels, Esoteric Astrologer, coming at you to talk about May of 2023. <clears throat> okay, and thanks again, the guys at Know Thyself Podcast. Thank you so much for all you do for me and for everybody. Um, okay, so let's talk about this eclipse. I'm making this video on May 3rd. The eclipse will be on the 5th. And it's um, a full moon eclipse, right? So sun in Taurus, moon in Scorpio. What's also interesting here is that the Sun and Uranus will be close together, conjuncting, both of them opposing the Moon. Now, um, the full moons tend to be, you know, emotional and stuff, <laughs> and Uranus is, on one level, you know, an eclipse especially for a full moon is very uh, revealing, internally revealing, there's a lot of revelations that insights, you know, um, seeing into yourself. It's a great time to do meditation, especially with a Scorpio moon. Um, but then when you put Uranus in the mix, it brings up so much of that unexpected, that Eureka kind of idea, you know, and that's great with spiritual searching and things. Maybe not so great for sleeping. <laughs> I don't know, I have trouble sleeping, but you know, Uranus can disrupt the moon, which is our um, rhythms of our body. But also, it can make people agitated, you know, especially people that aren't on a spiritual path and don't have self-soothing techniques and stuff. It can make you people feel edgy, um, jump to conclusions, or just, you know, a souped up full moon. Um, and also, of course, it's an eclipse, so it's extra zhuzhed up already. And for those of you who know about, um, there's some sacred texts that talk about the Wesak moon, W-E-S-A-K, which is supposed to be when the um, the masters who take care of the planet, the spiritual masters, meet in the Himalayas. This once a year kind of get together. And uh, they say that happens at the full moon in Taurus. So there's a, that spiritual insight kind of thing that people, some people feel it has more, again, this intensity and being able to unlock your own secrets of your life, get out of your own way in a lot of manners and stuff like that so it's a little extra maybe for you to know about if you believe in that kind of thing or not but that idea that Uranus is making it go even the energy go even bigger you know the other interesting thing is we're still in a Mercury retrograde and so Mercury retrograded at 15 degrees of Taurus um, and let's just call it 14 because I'm gonna say that the eclipse is at 14 degrees the Sun and the moon at 14 degrees so the eclipse, full moon, is at the same degree the Mercury went retrograde. And when Mercury went retrograde, it was also near Uranus, because Uranus hasn't moved much in the past week or so. Um, so that's also driving in this thing about this inner exploration. The full moon's in Scorpio. The, the Mercury retrograde is about going within. So have that extra time to have insights. And if you're feeling reactive, to give the time to explore that. You know, what is going on? Or... There could be a whole new way of viewing things within yourself that's very freeing. So allowing some time for, if it's meditation, writing in a journal, keeping track of your dreams, um, and, and kind of putting some pieces together, you know, because it can really pay off a lot. Um, now with the Mercury retrograde, it's Mercury still retrograde, right? So it's going to go direct on May 15th. Um, and for those of you that like to know, it catches up with itself on May 31st. So then Mercury's covering fresh territory since the retrograde. Um, but that is, of course, a relief to a lot of people, Mercury going direct. But there's just, it, don't rush through it. Again, like make sure you're taking that time for those insights. It'll be very, very good. Um, okay, so the other thing to talk about, there's just some intense things going on here. Um, when we have the, well, we'll leave that one. Okay, let's talk about Mars is going to go into Leo, and it's going to oppose Pluto, which is still in Aquarius for a little bit, right? Um, and next month it's going to pop back into Capricorn. We'll cover that in June. So um, Mars, I would say Mars is like Pluto's little brother, you know? Um, but Mars and Pluto opposing can be challenging. Um, and no offense against Leos at all, please. But, you know, Mars and Leo especially when it's zero degrees, just goes right in. It's like, what I want, you know? It's very much, it's desires, it's, it can be angry. Um, and when Mars is opposed Pluto, it can make you feel like everyone's in my way. Oh, like, like Pluto is like um, forces that can keep you down. 
or you can feel thwarted or irritable and stuff. And this is happening on um, the 21st, by the way, this Mars opposing Pluto. And um, so, you know, you kind of want to get out of people's way at that point. Um, and maybe to see if you can put off people that are hot tempered, if you don't have to talk to them about things, if it's not that urgent. Um, the other thing that'll happen, so we've got the Mars and Pluto opposing, and then the planet Jupiter, um, is going into Taurus, which we'll talk about, but Jupiter will be squaring both of those. And Jupiter, um, Jupiter is a lot of fun in a lot of ways and it's big and bold and all that. But it magnifies things. So we're saying, okay, now Jupiter in this challenging angle with the Mars and Pluto, it's, it, it, again, fires that up. Now, in a good way, this can be when you've had this Mercury retrograde and the eclipse and you have discovered some things in yourself that you want to shift. And this could be old stuff. It could be related to trauma or fears you have or something that this Mars opposed Pluto can just, and with the Jupiter as well, it, it gives you maybe a good sense of, um, boldness, a good sense of um, entitlement, kind of like a Davy and Goliath feeling towards your fears. And, and you're like, I'm going to do that slingshot, pam, and you can knock that giant of fear over because you you, you feel kind of entitled to this or, or just maybe too bold, quote unquote. So it, it, with interior things, it's really good. With things that you're working on within yourself, it's great. But if you just kind of do stuff like, I'm going to go tell them off, then it's like, oh, why did I do that? You know, it can spin into uh, a problem if you're dealing with other people and their egos and whatever. When you're dealing with things in yourself, it's it's usually it can be really really good to challenge yourself to break through and um, you know not be mean to yourself, obviously, but just kind of getting some gumption to shut down negative voices and challenge the fears and just say, no, I'm not going to listen to that. To begin some sort of um, regimen of boldly not listening to the negative voices um, and to like create this new self out of this time period that's going on like um, a self that's more free from these things at play here you know but again when you're dealing with other people it's tread a little more gingerly um, yeah so <laughs> I'm upset about that so <clears throat> so the other thing is we've talked about the full moon I'm sorry if this my mom would have been the best dress to use here that keeps slipping off um, that we've got the full moon with sun opposed moon and of course the Uranus um, next to the sun but also we have the the new moon which is the sun conjunct the moon in late degrees of um, Taurus then we have Pluto trining that and that's really cool that's on May 19 and, and this is where it's like this hard work paying off kind of a thing because the new moon is a fresh approach and Pluto trining it is again this ability to sustain these actions, you know, or these insights really get traction within you. And then that's on the 19th. And then we have that Mars opposed Pluto, which is like, no, I am going to keep pushing. I am going to keep being this new self. I am going to keep believing this insight I had that, you know, because when you have these insights and then they fade, they don't seem as grand as time goes by. And that's that could happen at the uh, full moon eclipse, but then that new moon reinforces, like I'm gonna keep believing that. Use those, uh, like make an affirmation out of if you have any insights or goals, like to keep keep going, you know? And Pluto is like the long haul. Pluto's the long game. It isn't like, you know, I need a result right away. It's like I'm willing to keep going and make changes and to believe it's gonna make a shift over time, you know? And that's when we do have that Mars opposed Pluto. It's like, okay, you know, Mars wants to know right now, right now. And Pluto's like, nope, we're going to keep going, you know, and keep being bold and keep pushing. And um, so that actually is really neat. So I mentioned Jupiter going into Taurus, which it's going to. So once a year, Jupiter has a 12-year orbit. It changes signs once a year. So here we are at the change. And so Jupiter itself will be in Taurus. So that starts on... Let's see, the 18th, I didn't write down what it went in. Whoops, this is my book. This is called the an Ephemeris. It tells you all the planets are. Looks like gibberish, but to me it's like, oh, well, I know what that means. Look at this all my life. <laughs> That's like crazy. I think some of you know I've been doing astrology, well, learning astrology since I was three. So I would be reading, looking at these ephemerises from like even kindergarten, before kindergarten, trying to figure them out. 
Thanks, Mom. <laughs> um, so Jupiter goes in, let's, let's say, the 16th of May, 16th, 17th, and stays in until, you know, basically another year until May of 2024, goes into Gemini. So, so Jupiter and Taurus, Jupiter is like fresh, bold energy, and Taurus is finances. So if you want to work with a new type of um, uh, budget for yourself, and, you know, because Taurus is money, but it's also ruled by Venus, that it includes things that are, you know, blessings for yourself, or planning also for a vacation, or for splurges, or for, you know, um, helping yourself feel safe and nurtured at the same time. And partly nurturing is that artistic sense, which would be time off and having beauty in your house and, and things like that. So it's an inclusive type of looking at your finances. Also your body. Um, Taurus is our, what we own. and We, you know, own our body, I guess, or we're in charge of our body. And so Jupiter is about blessings. It's about forgiveness, um, forgiving what your body looks like. Um, and that way, then you could say, well, if I've gained 50 pounds, I'm still loving my body and working toward change. And again, Taurus is slow, steady steps. So that can help you if you do need to make changes, you know, whatever kind of actions, if it's eating less or exercising more, or whatever. But there's something about starting from that place of appreciation and honor and respect and then implementing those changes and being consistent with them, you know, and being patient for a result. You're not going to lose 50 pounds overnight or something like that, you know. And Jupiter in, in Taurus is like, keep working with gratitude about anything, really, you know. Um, you know, I, I'm into tithing. I think I've mentioned other times Jupiter going into Taurus could be Jupiter is generosity and Taurus is money. And even like being consistent at giving money away to a consistent place that's meaningful to you. Uh, it's like a spiritual, um, somewhere you get you know, spiritually nurtured um, and you're supporting that those people or, or institutions or whatever. That can be part of Jupiter and Taurus too. Um, so that you're implementing, you know, the uh, circulation of money. So you're exhaling money and inhaling money and it starts to create greater prosperity. That can be something you could look into. There's wonderful books about spirituality of money and, and all of that. Um, I love The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity by Catherine Ponder, which is, seems very dated and you got to get by, if you're not into Bible quotes, there's a lot of Bible quotes, but she was trying to show people who were raised in the, in the South in like the 50s and 60s, like that, that God wants you to be prosperous. It's not you know, people that were raised Southern Baptist and had a belief at the time about it's sacred to be poor. So she's trying to break the mindset in that. So she's using a lot of Bible quotes to prove like, you know, God wants you to be wealthy and not suffer, you know, <laughs> it's not great to suffer. And this is how you can tap into your personal abundance. And then I also love a little book called It Works by R.H.J. Um, it was written in the 20s and it's also about the spirituality of money. It's more of a little pamphlet and then you can make lists and, um, you know, this is before law of attraction kind of things, but kind of pulling on those sort of principles, you know, and those are oldies but goodies, Dynamic Laws of Prosperity by Catherine Ponder was written, I think, 1962. But um, so Jupiter and Taurus can be that. The other thing is that <clears throat> Venus is going into Cancer and that will be around the 8th of May, 7th or 8th. And, you know, it just stays in for the month, right? It'll go into um it goes into Leo in the first week of June, but it's, again, it's self-care, Venus is love, Cancer is your family, it's your home, it's your body in the sense of where I feel safe. So both Taurus and Cancer can be about the body and caring for the body. And Jupiter and Venus are similar in the sense of caring and generous, being generous with your time, being generous with your thoughts towards yourself. And spending time with family is great with, with both of these um um, planets moving into those signs. Although if you have a tell off a relative, you won't go back to all that stuff and maybe, maybe not. Um, but um, this idea of feeling like you love what you have, even if you want more in your life, if you love what you have, it increases the, um, the magnetism you have for even more to come in that you love, you know? And that's really hard to do when you're not psyched about circumstances to feel that you're loving what you have because it's almost like you're giving up and just, oh, this is good enough. But it's it, that energy of gratitude can be very magnetic, as you probably know. 
Okay, so thank you for listening. If you want to get a session with me, alunamichaels.com. You could call or text me at 248-583-1663. Our website is alunamichaels.com. Um, and yeah, you can subscribe here uh, for YouTube. Um, get on my website and get um, on my mailing list as well if you like. And um, have a great month. Enjoy the magic of the eclipse. And I will see you later. Bye-bye for now.